yo-yo diplomacy for, that tries to say three things. The first thing is, is that understanding China is particularly difficult. And understanding China today and making judgments now, unlike a history professor who has 50 years or you, can, you, know, you can wait and make judgments and look back 50 years, that's the job of the journalist and it's a difficult job, particularly with China. And that's the, that's the kind of judgment that I have to make all the time and my colleagues have to make all the time. And surprise, surprise, sometimes we get it wrong. And it's a, very, it's a very daunting task. The second thing is that, is that China itself is a, a moving target, particularly now as it's moving. And so it's, it's very difficult. But it, to make matters worse, in the United States, the, as a general proposition, the people who are very undereducated about China are, were unprepared for the rise of China, which began, as you know, probably in 1979, uh, and was zooming along through the 90s and through the century. And it really wasn't until about 2004 that the American people woke up and said, oh my God, China's, what has happened? Overnight success. And then you had the Olympics, which was very well done, a bird's nest. Then you had the American financial crisis, uh, generated financial crisis, which was uh, a downer for everybody. And so what the book is really trying to say is what's a wake up America, and secondly, it tries to go take the reader inside the psychology of the journalist and how difficult it is to do what we try to do and why we get it wrong sometimes. But then it goes to the third uh, point of uh, reflection, which is that uh, A, we must have a positive view about China, uh, and B, the relationship with the United States must work. Yo-yo, up, down, up, down, up, down. Where it stops, nobody knows. Yeah, I think it's part of the yo-yo. I would suggest that the uh, trade deficit issue is a really supremely negotiable issue. I, I don't think the trade uh, thing per se is going to bring down the relationship. I do think um, I issues in the, in the South China Sea when you're involving an ally like Japan, the Taiwan issue, and also I think the issue of uh, intellectual property rights is a serious issue. But serious, I mean, that's what negotiation is all about. I mean, you know, you negotiate these issues and maybe you only get half of what you want, but it's better than getting nothing or going to war. If we could only get Americans to stop buying Chinese goods that are good in price and good in value. But the short answer to your question, which I didn't give you, is that I think it's a good sign, but a minor sign. I hope I'm wrong, uh, and I am known to be an optimist, because I'm an American. I think it's going to be very difficult. Part of the reason for the difficulty is we don't understand them. They may understand us better than we understand them, but uh, it would, the idea would be if both understood one another better. In other words, that we, we know what they're doing, but why are they doing it? The problem is, is that with all of the moving parts in China and all the interrelationships, I mean, a country like Singapore needs to know kind of, you know, what it, where it fits into the whole thing. And if it's changing all the time, it's, it's a nightmare. And, and I, think it's, I think it's potentially very dangerous. Oh, I think it's terrible for Singapore. I mean, I think Singapore has had a brilliant foreign policy, which is playing both sides of the street. Uh, maybe with a tilt towards the United States, probably more than maybe, but, uh, but nonetheless keeping relations open with, with China. And what you don't want, and I remember you know, I did a book uh, about your, the late Lee Kuan Yew, the founder of Singapore, and in that book, Conversations with Lee Kuan Yew, he, he says at one point, you don't want Asians to have to choose between the United States and China. So I think disaster might be too strong a word, but it'll be very unpleasant for Singapore. Thing. Now, I've been saying this, and sometimes people have looked at me like I was almost a traitor. But now that, is, you know, now that you look at what's happening in Washington, you say, well, are we really now in, the, in a sort of an ethical and psychological position to be telling other countries how they should run their internal politics? I, I think not. So in one sense, it's easier now for me to make that point when you look at the disarray in Washington. That's all the questions.
Thank you so much. But I have more answers. Mm -hmm. <laughs>